the last two and a half weeks of 2020, I tried to completely unplug, disconnect, and just take those weeks off, uh, taking time away from work, what I do here on YouTube, on social media in general. Uh, taking time away from that is really hard for me because I'm really uh, invested in you know this kind of relationship I have with you guys. Uh, I don't take that for granted or take it lightly at all. For better or worse, I take all the feedback that you guys give me to heart and I really try to analyze every little thing because I want to make good videos, good photos, all of that stuff, uh, responding to emails, messages, comments, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, no matter what I'm doing, that's kind of always in the back of my mind. And I'm always thinking about, you know, new photo projects, new videos that I want to make. It's really, really hard for me to disconnect, but I felt like that was something that was really just long overdue. And the first week of taking that time off, it was kind of hard for me to do it. Uh, but I inevitably just deleted the apps from my phone, whether it be Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I didn't check emails or anything like that. I really tried to just give myself some space because I knew all of the work that I was doing, it was, you know, currently done and people were taking time off for the holidays anyway. So it just felt like the right time to do it. And I came away from that feeling a lot of different things. And I want to share that with you guys, which I'm probably going to break this up into two separate videos. Probably next week, we'll talk all about my YouTube channel moving forward and just sort of my kind of goals and how I want to approach this YouTube channel moving forward in 2021. Uh, different upload schedule, different video ideas, that kind of thing. Uh, because the time away definitely gave me a lot to think about in that regard. But today I want to talk specifically about social media uh, and how it affects us as photographers. Before I started this YouTube channel in 2014, I was pretty much using Instagram the way I use my YouTube channel for the couple years before that. So sharing everything from photos that I've taken, obviously, but you know what cameras I'm shooting, how I'm shooting a specific film stock or a specific camera, photo books I was buying, really just all of the kind of stuff I share in video format now, but I was doing it just on Instagram back then. And just the film photography community in general was such a like smaller, tight-knit kind of thing. Uh, it was kind of before we saw this mass resurgence in film photography. And the growth in that and just sort of the community there is what made me want to make this YouTube channel in the first place. But I've been still using Instagram the same way as sort of this ongoing kind of public journal where I'm talking about thoughts I have in regards to photography, different cameras I'm trying out, film stocks I'm trying out, uh, really just kind of being sort of an example for people, not like as the example to follow, but just, you know, here are my experiences, here's what I'm learning, here's what I'm finding out, um, just to try and be a resource for people if they wanna see that kind of thing. And I think this idea of social media and just kind of cranking out content, 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 you know, over and over, uh, it's easy to kind of find yourself in this loop where that's all you really do. And especially if it becomes your job, which I never expected that to become my job because I've been doing photography for a really long time, way before I ever thought someone would actually pay me to take photos, uh, let alone talk about taking photos. It's bizarre. It was just something that kind of naturally, you know, happened and evolved. And I think it's because the way I've used it, it's made people... Uh, feel connected in a way because they feel like they know me on a personal level and I really appreciate that kind of connection I've been able to have with people as a result of using social media in this way and that's why I've continued to do it that way for so long. But taking this time off uh, to not think about posting any photos or responding to messages or anything like that it really made me think a lot about just the last, you know, seven or eight years. Mid 2012 was around the time I really started kind of putting that kind of stuff out there. I never talked about photography. I just put my photos out there before that. Uh, and then, you know, just kind of starting this conversation about photography with other like-minded photographers, that's kind of where things started. And I've just never really stopped since then. And the time off, I was explaining it to my wife the other night, we were eating dinner. And I said, you know, it, it feels like I've been this long distance runner and I've just been running and running and running and I haven't stopped. I haven't looked back or anything. And this time off, I've, I feel like is like the first break that I've given myself where I've stopped to kind of catch my breath. And then I look behind me to see, you know, the, the path that I've been running on. And it was like, 
I couldn't even see that far into the distance because it just feels like it's been so long and so much has happened that I haven't had, I just haven't given myself the time to like really kind of reflect. And so then that got me thinking about this, you know, constant loop of photography where we, we shoot photos, we share them, we get the feedback on those photos and then we shoot more photos. And then we, we, we get into this cycle, uh, at least I think I did at certain times and I'm sure a lot of other people did as well, where you're, you're shooting photos specifically for the sake of them going on social media and posting them to any audience that you might have. And for someone who's been doing it before social media was ever a thing, like, that's a really strange and kind of bizarre thing that you don't really think about, or at least I didn't. So one night I was just scrolling through my Instagram just to kind of, you know, sit back and reflect and just see all of these different things that I've shared on Instagram and, you know, the conversations I've had back and forth with people just in the comments of those posts. And Instagram back in, you know, 2013, that's when I made the account that I currently have now. I basically deleted the old account and started fresh. Uh, which will sound familiar in a minute. Back then, Instagram was just a totally different app. There were no stories. There weren't even messages, I think, in 2013. I think the DMs were added later. It was just such a different kind of app, and so I used it very differently. I was posting on my feed just anything and everything, stuff that now I would probably just post on my story, and it'll go away in 24 hours, you know. It was just a totally different app, and so I was just scrolling through and seeing all of these different things, and... Uh, it really kind of tripped me out to, to think about how long it's been that I've been doing what I've been doing and taking all of these photos that I've been just throwing out there on Instagram, again, for the sake of just kind of being a resource and, and for people to connect to it. And there were photos in there that I completely forgot about, photos that now, if I had just seen the photo for the first time, I would probably say, yeah, I'm not going to post that on social media. I don't think that's a strong photo. But, you know, that's that's part of the growth of being a photographer and, you know, shooting photos and, and evaluating your photos and trying to improve and progress. But it just felt like there was so much of me out there, everything from the photos to the captions to just everything. It just, I mean, there were over 3,800 posts on my feed and it just felt like so much that I couldn't even, it was like I couldn't take take account of, of everything of myself that was out there. There was a post I made uh, pretty early on where I had basically taken a screenshot of my account where it said 1,500 followers and I posted that on my feed just talking about how, you know, mind-blowing that was for me to have 1,500 people who were interested in the photos that I was taking. And that, like seeing that and reading my own words that I put out there around that time, it really tripped me out because obviously now my Instagram following has grown much more, the YouTube channel, etc. Like it's it's become, you know, my job. And so so looking at numbers and analytics and that kind of stuff, it inevitably just sticks in your mind all day. And it's really, really, really easy to kind of take that stuff for granted. To think back then, I was like in shock that there were 1,500 people following me. Uh, it was just, it was crazy for me to see that because again, I hadn't really revisited any of those photos, you know, that far back on my feed and especially all of my thoughts and, and the captions and stuff that I was putting out there. Um, it was just really interesting. So I'm going through everything and I'm seeing photos that I still like, seeing photos that I don't like anymore. And it just kind of made me think about, you know, how we value photos in real time versus letting those photos kind of live on their own and marinate for a while before we ever share them. I've never treated Instagram like a portfolio where every photo that goes up has to be, you know, my best work. Because again, I've tried to just show the ups and downs of a photographer and kind of seeing, you know, as they're going through different things in their life and how that's affecting the work and just experimenting, trying new things, trying different cameras and film stocks and all of that stuff but I feel like I'm at a point in my life and I guess career now where I just want to kind of approach things a little bit differently. And I know that had I not been using Instagram that way for so long, I definitely wouldn't be sitting here talking to a camera. I wouldn't have the audience that I have now. Uh, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And, and again, I don't think I would be where I am without having done that all of those years. But I feel like I'm at a place where I just need to do things differently. So I went ahead and just archived or deleted every single post on my Instagram feed. Uh, some of them I archived because I thought I might want to go and look through that myself again. Uh, but, you know, all of those photos that I've posted, they're not only on Instagram. I have the files backed up and everything for myself. So 
the, the photos don't have to be out there for everybody in order for me to keep them. So I went through, archived and deleted everything, uh, over 3,800 photos. It took me days. Uh, I would basically just put a movie on and just sit there and just one by one wipe things out. Uh, there were multiple times where Instagram thought I was being hacked because stuff was being deleted over and over So they limit how much you can do at a time But I finally got back to zero and I just started posting one photo every day uh, so far of the year And I don't know if this is going to become like a 365 thing where I post, you know, one photo every single day um, I, I'm right now. I'm kind of just doing it until maybe I get tired of it But so far 16 days in and, and so far we're good, but I'm not posting hashtags you know with what camera I used I'm not posting captions or anything because I'm, I'm trying to approach individual photos very differently and just how I share the work itself um, I think sharing my thoughts on the photos that's you know really fitting for stuff like this and, and being able to talk about some photos in longer form here on the channel uh, but in Instagram I like the idea of just putting the photo out there letting people kind of come up with their own sort of analysis or their own sort of uh, interpretation of the photo without, you know, what camera was I using? What film stock? What was I doing that day? Uh, just letting the photo just be a photo and that's it. It's been really, really refreshing for me to just use Instagram in a totally different way. And again, I'm kind of looking at photos a little bit differently as a result of that. I don't have to think, how can I, you know, share this photo and, and tie in some sort of whether it be educational thing or something that relates to, to a YouTube video that I've just put out, anything like that. Um, just sharing one photo a day, just keeping it super simple and just letting people think what they think of it just based on the photo. I'm also not sharing any photos that I'm shooting right now. So all of the photos that have been on my feed are all really old photos. They're photos that I've posted on my Instagram before years ago, uh, but it was to a different audience back then than it is now. You know, things are always changing. Uh, it's just, it's interesting to see sort of the response to certain photos that were years ago. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of treating it as an experiment and letting myself uh, give myself a lot of time on current photos before I put anything out there. I wanna let myself live with those photos before I immediately throw them out on social media and let other people start picking them apart and telling me all the different things they either like or don't like about the photos. I guess I'm just trying to get a little bit more intimate with my own photos before they become, you know, public and everyone on Instagram can see them. And people have commented and asked questions about the particular photo or they've asked what camera I used or whether it was film or digital and I don't mind sharing any of that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm trying to, to kind of shift the conversation away from that a little bit because I don't want that to be all people see when they see my work is what camera I'm using or what film I'm using or anything like that. As much as I try to be a resource and give people information that they can use, I also am a photographer rather than just a teacher. And so I kind of want to kind of you know, lean into that a little bit. Which actually brings me to another point, which I thought people would message me about this, but so far they haven't. And that's in over two weeks now of posting one photo every single day. I haven't posted a single photo of, you know, my daily life at home with my family. Which if you're familiar with this YouTube channel or my Instagram before, uh, there was a lot of that. You know, that's a lot of the kind of stuff I love to shoot is just everyday stuff with my wife and my two kids and our dogs and our cat. Like, just everyday simple stuff, you know? And that's one of the main things I really try to encourage people to do is to, you know, document your life. Like, that's a big, important message for me and it's something that I really want people to do. And that's the idea behind sharing all of it. And I get messages and comments from people every day telling me, you know, I've encouraged them to shoot more photos of their own life and their own kids, which is amazing. Like, I love knowing that. Um, but I guess for myself, I was always kind of, you know, maybe it's just like the imposter syndrome in me just thinking, you know, other people, they probably just assume, oh, that's all he takes photos of, or that's all he does with his camera is just take photos of his kids, you know? And it's probably just me sort of like having a chip on my shoulder and, and wanting to, to prove it to everyone else, but more than anything, prove it to me that like, that's not all I have to say as a photographer, as, as weird as it is saying that, and it, I, 
I feel really vulnerable, like sharing that kind of thing. But uh, when you when you put so much of yourself out there, you inevitably start to wonder how people are perceiving that. You know, what what's their perception of you? And I love taking photos of my kids every day and sharing them because I know people love those, you know, little normal moments in everyday life. And again, that's what I love encouraging people to shoot. But I specifically haven't shared anything because I feel like I have so much more I want to say as a photographer. I have photos that I've made in the past, which again is what I've been going through and sharing because they're photos that I still really enjoy, but I have photos and projects that I want to pursue that I can learn from just as not only a photographer, but just as another human. I want to challenge myself. I want to shoot more work that's outside of just the everyday stuff. And I felt like if I really continued to just share more and more of that kind of stuff, maybe people would think that that's, you know, all I have to say. And and at the same time, it wasn't a matter of, you know, oversharing in terms of, you know, oh, I, I shouldn't have shared that particular photo or anything like that because me and Molly, my wife, we're both, you know, we're extremely intentional about what we share. You know, there is obviously a limit because we, we do put a lot of ourselves out there, but there, there of course, is a limit to what we do share. Um, I'm comfortable with every photo and every post I've ever made, but there was part of me that just thought, you know, they're my family. Like they're, they're my, they're my people. You know, I, I get to love them. I get to be with them every day. They're, they're not just here for everyone else. And at first I was like, maybe that's being selfish. But then I was like, no, they're, they're my family. Like that, that, that's not, that's not what they're here for, you know? And I think that was probably another thing that I really struggled with was do people think that this is like all they are to me? Do they just think that they're just my work, you know, which if I ever put out like a book of my family photos, I would be open to that. But after putting them all out there on social media over and over, does that devalue, you know, inevitably a book someday? Probably. But I also started thinking about, you know, these, these photos of my kids and some of my favorite photos I've ever made. And of course, I'll continue to share that stuff probably here on YouTube. But I started wondering about just how that kind of affects the individual photo, like if I make a photo of my family that I really love and I share that, and it doesn't matter if thousands of people connect with that photo, part of me started to wonder like subconsciously do the likes and the comments and all of that stuff, does that get attributed to how I feel about that photo or how I value that photo? And I don't think it ever has for me, but just the thought of that ever being a possibility it just immediately, I was like, that doesn't feel right. And it's probably just me overanalyzing everything as I always do. But um, it just, it really struck me that I just thought, you know, as, as open of a book as I am, and as much as I love sharing and connecting with people, um, keeping some of your photos just for yourself, it's a really good feeling at the same time. And it's something that I'm honestly not used to because I love the connection that I make with people through sharing my work. And that's why I've always done it. But again, this time off has really just made me kind of reevaluate and rethink some things. And uh, just I'm kind of taking a different approach, at least for the time being. And I don't want to, you know, wait another seven or eight years before I kind of check in with myself and start kind of analyzing some of this stuff. Um, I just want to be a little bit slower and more intentional with just everything across the board in regards to social media and specifically using it to share my work. So I guess sort of the takeaway from all of this is what you're putting out there in terms of social media as a photographer. Uh, really let yourself spend some time with the work before you immediately throw it out there. Um, if you feel like you could benefit from that, if you feel like you just want to immediately shoot the photo and share it today, go nuts, uh, do your thing. Uh, you know, just at least take this into consideration because it's something that I haven't given myself the space to do. And now I'm just going back through the archives and I'm still shooting every day, but I'm not even really worried about those photos right now. I've just been shooting, backing things up or getting it developed and just, uh, you know, really going back and looking at photos that I shot six, seven, eight years ago. And uh, I'm seeing photos uh, in a different way now than I ever have. And I'm seeing photos that I probably never even gave a second look back then. And now I'm thinking, okay, there's actually something here. So 
uh, it's just been really refreshing. I've been spending the last you know few weeks just kind of reflecting on work that I made that uh, I was so just, you know, I was a hamster in a wheel. I was just still going. So, uh, it's been nice. It's been a really nice break. And, uh, I hope as a takeaway, you guys can kind of get something from that, you know, really give yourself some time to be with your photos. Uh, let the photos marinate. Don't just throw them out there on social media again, unless that's really what you want to do, then go for it. But it's felt really good. Nonetheless, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this long sit down and talk the other day when I asked if you'd be interested, it was a resounding yes. So I'm glad to know you guys actually enjoy this kind of stuff. Next week, we'll probably talk all about YouTube and my intentions with the YouTube channel, upload schedule, all that kind of stuff. Um, feel free to invoice me for this therapy session that you guys have just endured. But uh, thank you guys seriously so much for, for sticking with me. And uh, I really, really hope you got something out of this. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to read it. But that's it for today. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.